Well, lately I've been getting quite a few questions from you guys, uh, both in the comments here on YouTube and then also in uh, the threads and forums there on XDA. And I want you guys to know that I do read uh, each and every comment, uh, at least thus far, I've been able to do so. Perhaps there may come a time where there's there's too many comments and I won't be able to get to all of them. But at this point, I'm still able to read uh, each and every comment that you guys make. And when you guys are asking questions, I do really consider uh, the questions and if I can answer them like in the threads or here uh, just by making a, a reply to your comment, I, I typically do so. But uh, one of the things that you guys have requested is uh, some information. And so I'd like to start a little mini-series that uh, over over time, I'll probably just keep coming back to and adding a little bit more to as well as new questions come up. But I'm hoping to answer some of those um, perhaps perhaps in some ways basic questions, but sometimes not basic questions. They're just questions that, uh, things that maybe we take for granted or information that we need to know, but it's not necessarily part of the, uh, of the process of um, building, or maybe it is part of the process of building, but it's something that we kind of just take for granted and don't necessarily fully understand. So I'd like to start out today by answering the question of what is a blob. In particular, this comes up all the time when you're building, and the term is vendor blob, which is a very specific type of blob. And so um, so we're going to take a look at that today. So when we start out, here we are. Uh, we're on uh, GitHub right now, and we can see that we've brought up the Android device OnePlus bacon for Lineage OS. And of course, you know the branch is Lineage 16.0. So if you wanted to build for the bacon, uh, you know, the, the OnePlus uh, phone here, um, you're going to uh, end up downloading this probably by, you know, selecting from the lunch combo or by adding it to your manifest, and we have uh, videos for that if you'd like to check those out. But when you download this device tree and you try to build for your device, if you don't download the vendor blobs, you will not have a successful boot when you try to boot. It'll build just fine. It'll say that it's done um, building, but it won't actually boot up when it's time to use it because you need the vendor blobs. Now, typically, um, you have various ways of getting those vendor blobs. And so now is the part where we need to stop and explain what a blob is. And... Um, when you look up blob, you actually get this word broken down into binary large objects. So the B from binary, L from large, and then OB from object becomes the term blob. So when you see a blob, it's actually a binary large object. And it says here on Wikipedia, it is a collection of binary data stored as a single entity in a database management system. According to Wikipedia, it says blobs are typically images, audio, or other multimedia objects, though sometimes binary executable code is stored as a blob. Database support for blobs is not universal. However, and you could read through this to get a little history on it, what we're looking at primarily is binary blobs. Down here, we click on binary blob, and this is what we see. Uh, in the context of free and open source software... A binary blob is a closed source, binary only piece of software. The term usually refers to closed source kernel module loaded into the kernel or an open source operating system and is sometimes also applied to code running outside the kernel, such as system firmware images, microcode updates, or user land programs. And then it goes on to des describe that in a little more detail and some history of that. But when we're working with Android, particularly AOSP, which is what we get Lineage and Slim ROMs and OmniROM ultimately from, is AOSP, the Android Open Source Project. Uh, AOSP is a free and open source software program. Uh, it's an operating system, rather, and it uh, utilizes the Linux kernel, which is a free and open source kernel that is used to, uh, you know, um, uh, run the uh, the operating system, run the hardware that interfaces with the operating system. And, uh, and so this all works together 
to uh, to form um, everything you need from the fact of clicking or tapping on something on your phone actually makes the hardware do something like make a phone call. So blobs are in and of themselves not necessarily bad, but um, just because by definition it's just compiled data. Um, and you, when you are building the Android open source project or Lineage OS or any of these ROMs, you are building little blobs yourself that are getting put into the into use by the system. However, when we say a blob or a vendor blob, we're referring to this closed source binary only piece of software. So closed source would be something that is not open sourced. I know that didn't sound uh, really profound, did it? But the Android open source project, all the code is available for you to see and for you to change and for you to edit and for you to uh, manipulate and for you to use. Um, closed source software is something that somebody wrote, but they don't want you to see the code. They don't want you to know exactly how it works. They just give you enough input uh, uh, so you know how to input to it and what the output will be so you can utilize it but it doesn't they don't necessarily want you to see the code itself on how it works some really good examples of that we can see if we jump over here to um, we have the Muppets which uh, have tons of different of these vendor uh, blobs available and we were just talking about the uh, bacon you know we had a device tree up here for the uh, one plus bacon and we look at the bacon right here, and we see that it has a bunch of these proprietary blobs. And so we could go through and, and look at some of these. Um, vendor, and we look at, uh, let's look at uh, um, lib, and we see lots of different uh, libraries that have been added in, and these are proprietary or closed source vendor blobs. We have to have them in this blob form because we don't have the code to build them ourselves. So um, certain programs like, uh, or excuse me, operating systems like Replicant, what their goal is is to make an Android operating system that is completely free of any vendor blobs and any blobs in general, that you just have all the source code for absolutely everything and you build everything yourself when you compile the ROM. And so you can see everything and what's going on. A lot of uh, blobs that you'll see in here in particular are related to the camera. And uh, that's because that's uh, one, of the, one of the typical things that the vendor the manufacturer of the camera doesn't want you to have because that gives them an edge on making their camera better than someone else's camera. And so they want you to buy their camera because it's the best, and part of the reason it's the best is not just the hardware, but the software that they put into it to make it work better. And so um, you utilize these blobs to interface with things like the camera. So these are camera libraries right here. Um, you can see uh, some codecs. Uh, you can see, let's try to find something else here, um, some firmware. Uh, probably uh, you could see firmware for things like maybe Wi-Fi or the radio interface. Um, and then you have uh, for this bin a binary, an executable program. And in this case, it's also, again, for the camera. And so typically what, uh, what you'll see is you'll see this list if you go to baconvendor.make you see this list of copying these files. And the reason you copy the files is because you're not building them. So you just have these files and you copy them to the right place uh, where they need to be to run the things that you need to run. Now notice in this case, really, the vendor blobs are almost exclusively uh, for the camera for this phone. But on some phones, that's not the only case. I mean, you can have vendor blobs for anything, anything from GPS to camera to, um, you know, uh, the... Uh, fingerprint sensor to anything. Now a lot of this equipment um, either will get released and then it won't be a um, 
vendor blob that's closed source anymore. They might make some open source uh, availability for it and whatnot. And so then you add that into your build tree and then you don't have to um, use the closed source blob. Also, sometimes people build their own um, open source software to interface with this hardware by reverse engineering uh, the way the hardware works and coming up with their very own code that they release as open source and they put that into the uh, the tree, their um, trees for the different ROMs and that sort of thing in the Android open source project or from their own GitHub that you can download. And so you can actually find in some cases something that's a closed source hardware but that has an open source driver for it that somebody else reverse engineered on their own and wrote that for you to use. So um, a little bit technical of the uh, the things there but so that's what we're talking about when we're talking about these vendor blobs. It's some piece of hardware typically that um, they didn't release the software for it as an open source platform. So the only way to get software to run that piece of hardware, like a camera or um, maybe a fingerprint sensor or something like that, is to utilize um, you know, these vendor blobs, these binary large objects. So then the next question would be, how do we get these blobs? Where do these blobs come from? Well, when they sell you the phone, uh, your phone has all of the blobs on it needed to do the things that it does. Obviously, it wouldn't work very well without them. So typically, uh, the most legal way to handle this, uh, to make sure there's no infringement of copying the blobs and dispersing the blobs, is actually you have a these um, extract file.shell commands right here and set up makefile.shell. And what these do is you plug in your phone and when your phone is plugged in to uh, you know to your computer, you run these scripts and it will actually go through and download all of the files needed from your phone. And so in this case it says you know it needs to actually run the extract files from the MSM 8974-common. So these common phones uh, have the same Listing and so, like we could go ahead and look that up just for um, learning purposes here. Let's see, MSM eighty nine. What was it? Thirty seven. Common. No, let's see. O P P O eighty nine seventy four common. I think that was it. Well, we could double check. 8974 common. Yep, there we go. So then it goes here and it reads the extract files shell from here. And it goes through and it runs these commands and it looks for different um, vendor files that you write down in the proprietary files.txt. <laughs> so uh, it's going to go through and look at this proprietary files.txt file and it's going to look for all of these vendor blobs that you wrote down in this file and it's going to copy them to your um, to your hard drive so that way you can build another ROM and it's going to put all of these pieces into that ROM and the way that it puts all those pieces into that ROM is with this setup make file.shell this creates a special file that we can see here in our vendor file, this one right here, this product copy files, is made by this uh, setup makefile.shell. And so that's the most legal way is because it was your phone and those are your, uh, essentially like you bought that phone with your vendor blobs, so then you are actually extracting them from your very own phone and then you're going to put them back into the ROM that you're building. Uh, and uh, and that way, you um, just used your own your own software that you had purchased already with the phone by purchasing the phone, and you copy that into the new ROM that you're going to be building. And that way, there's no distribution of those vendor blobs, which are proprietary blobs. Uh, the other way that you can get uh, vendor blobs is with 
places like the Muppets uh, or other GitHub uh, repositories where people have gone through this process. They've copied them from their phone and made this, this file by running the scripts, which is automatic, and then they just put it up here on their GitHub, uh, you know, um, repositories for people like you to go through and, and go ahead and download them. Essentially, uh, I guess this might be a little bit of a gray area because it looks like, you know, sharing the proprietary vendor blobs, um, which technically is, is uh, would be against uh, the rules. Um, however, also, uh, I guess some people look at it in the sense that you're going to extract these from your phone anyways. They just save you the time of having to extract them because you can download them already um, arranged properly. Um, so uh, I'm not here to debate the legality of it. I just want to explain how this process works and what exactly it is that we're doing. And so once again, when you build with your device tree, um, you could build this without the vendor blobs and the build will complete successfully. Unfortunately, it probably won't boot because it will need the vendor blob that runs something that that does something. For instance, like in this case, it looks like all the vendor blobs for the bacon are really just for the camera. So it might actually boot without the vendor blobs, but then the camera won't work. And so, uh, so that would be very unfortunate because, you know, obviously in today's world, a cell phone that doesn't have a working camera isn't isn't very useful um, compared to uh, 20 years ago when that wasn't really the case. So hopefully this gives you a really good idea of what a, a vendor blob is, what, uh, what the term blob actually stands for, being that binary large object, just compiled code, and that it's closed source material. It's material that has not been released in open source, things like the Android Open Source Project, which has tons of drivers for lots of equipment that already is released in the open source. Uh, notice that this um, bacon, uh, this bacon, uh, where do we go? There we go. Our proprietary vendor, OnePlus Bacon, uh, doesn't have any vendor blobs for the GPS because the GPS, we have open source blobs that make the GPS work. So there's tons of hardware that has open source material available for it to make it function. Now, sometimes uh, there's, there's vendor blobs that's equipment that's actually, there's an open source equivalent, but it may be not as good. For instance, the, the vendor blob version that's proprietary and closed source, they actually have put in more code that makes it work even better. But there's an open source variant that maybe doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but still gets the job done. So, um, you know, there's, there's some differences there that you might consider and look at if you're working, uh, working on a ROM or, or phone. But so uh, these binary large objects are just compiled code that's closed source. We don't have the source to build that. That piece of hardware won't function without it. And so that's why you need these um, blobs. And you can get those either by extracting them from your very own phone using these make files and extract files. And uh, or you can go to repositories like the Muppets and uh, find your... Um, particular model of phone and download those as well. So hopefully that helps out with the understanding of vendor blobs and we will be uh, taking a look at a few other things that we can learn from as well.